Hello everybody, Magico13, author of Kerbal Construction Time, here with what is hopefully going to be a short video describing some of the very basics of Kerbal Construction Time. This isn't going to be a fully comprehensive, in-depth tutorial. I'm going to try to keep this short. If I wanted to do a full-length one, it would be much longer. There's a very good one that is should be included in the original post on the forum page for Kerbal Construction Time. I urge you to check that out. It's for a slightly older version than this one, but it's way more comprehensive, and if you don't understand things after this, try checking that one out. If that doesn't work, check out the Getting Started Guide, which should be included with the download. It will hopefully cover everything pretty in depth, but let's start a new save and see how Kerbal Construction Time works. So when you start a new save, you'll be greeted by this window, which informs you you've got 15 upgrades, which you should probably put into the build rates in the building you will primarily be using, VAB or SPH. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, it will also tell you the current status of your automatic update checking. You can change that in the settings. I'm going to spend my 15 available upgrades in the VAB to upgrade my primary rate all the way up 2.85. You could, however, if you were building space planes, upgrade your SPH rate from 0 0.1 to 0.85, or you could split amongst them, or you could get a secondary rate. I'm not going to talk too much about secondary rates. They're kind of confusing. Basically, you can build multiple ships at once, depending on how many rates you have. If you have two rates, you can build two ships at once, three rates, three ships, and so on. There's also an R&D tab. Research gives you science for building ships. Pretty simple. Development says how long tech nodes will take to unlock. Every upgrade of this will cut the time in half. You can additionally buy points for 4 science or 16,000 funds. Every time that you do this, it doubles. So if you buy one for 4 science, it, then the next one costs 8 science. If you buy one for 16,000 funds, the next one costs 13. 32,000 funds, up to 512 science, or 1,024,000 funds. These are independent of each other, so if you only buy, science, buy points with science, then this one won't ever increase. You can also reset all of your upgrades back to uh, what the total is with all of them available by spending two points at once. This is not permanent, but it requires that you have two of them active, so you have to do a little bit of planning ahead. Now that I have these in the VAB, I'm going to go into the VAB and show you how that works. This little window is pretty much the key to using the editor. When you add parts to ships, the build time will increase and it will tell you how long it will take and the total number of build points, which is essentially just how much the ship is worth. So adding more parts increases the time and as you add more, it adds as a square root. So the total time required to build the entire ship is faster than the time required to build each part individually. So if we build a really quick ship, we can then decide to actually build it and then launch it. However, before we do that, we could also consider simulating the vessel. When we simulate, we choose a body at first, you only have Kerbin. As you gain, or as you visit other bodies, you can start a simulation in orbit around them. On Kerbin, you can start either on the surface, in this case at the launch pad, or by pressing this in orbit. Simulating in orbit costs more, as you can see here, and simulating around different celestial bodies also cost more based on their distance from Kerbin. You can also change the simulation length. By default is at 15 minutes. It can go all the way up to 10 Earth years or even infinity, which is what the 000 setting is. However, increasing the time also increases the cost. So at 15 minutes, this may only cost about 5 or 6 funds, but with infinite time, it costs 70. So we're going to keep that at 15. Let's try starting in an orbit just for fun. and. If we put this at 75 kilometers with an inclination of 45 degrees, simulate. You can see that we are in fact moved to orbit. We have this little window that pops up that informs us that once the time limit is up or once we leave the flight scene, the simulation ends and all progress is lost. 
We can build the vessel, restart the simulation, or revert to the editor, editor at any time by clicking this button. You can see we are in fact in orbit at about 75 kilometers with a 45 degree angle uh, inclination. Once we run out of time, we have the option of either building the vessel, purchasing an additional time slot for an increasing amount of funds, restarting the simulation, which if you use this button will restart in orbit, reverting to the editor, or going to the space center. So now that we have tried simulating a vessel, we can also build a vessel through the same menu. If we build it, it says that it's added to the VAB build list. Going to the Space Center and opening up the build list window, we can see that the untitled spacecraft in the VAB is building and has about three days left. We can also open up the VAB list to view all of the vessels that are currently building or scheduled to build in the VAB. We currently only have one, so we can only see its progress, how much time it has left, and its total build point cost. If we warp to the completion of that vessel, it then gets moved into the VAB storage where we can choose to launch it. From here we can choose what crew we want. Let's choose Bill Kerman, launch the vessel. And we can see the vessel is placed directly on the pad. Also, when we finished that vessel, a little message appeared up here that let us know that it was in the VAB storage. We can open up the build list in the flight scene, but we're unable to access the upgrades or the settings menu at this time. When we launch, launch pad reconditioning starts occurring. What this means is that after every launch, you must recondition the launch pad because it's been damaged from the exhaust from the rocket, and you cannot launch another vessel until that is complete. This progresses just like any other ship, but does not require... but does not take up a build slot. The build rate for this is actually the combination of all of the VAB build rates, not just the primary rate. You can additionally warp to complete here, however, in atmosphere that's not very useful. So now we're about to land, but unfortunately our um, solid rocket booster is going to be destroyed because we're going too quick. So that's going to explode, and then we'll land. Now when we recover this vessel, we get the familiar window from the stock game, but additionally we also get the parts that were in the ship. So when we come back here, we'll notice there's this option for use parts from inventory. If we disable that, you'll notice it takes 2 days, 4 hours, 57 minutes, which is less than what it took last time. That is simply because we have already used the parts. If we use parts from the inventory, which are parts that have been recovered either through landing them and using the recover button, or from having enough parachutes on the stage as it's dropped in the atmosphere, similar to how stage recovery and debris fund work, or if you have ever used Mission Controller before .24, how it worked before. KCD has had this in since February, and recently has also added funds recovery with it. However, if you're using debris fund, KCT will not do any of its own funds recovery. If you're using stage recovery, which is another mod by me, KCT will instead let stage recovery handle all of the recovery and KCT will still be able to receive the parts. So if you want a little more flexibility with your recovery of drop stages, I really suggest trying out stage recovery. Uh, the integration with KCT is a lot more than what I can do with debris fund. Let's also spend some of the science that we got from that launch. So we have 8.5, we can purchase this, and you'll notice we got an upgrade point, and this will unlock in 10 days. Now, when we leave this and come back, this is no longer unlocked. If we had enough science to press this again, it would let us know that it was already being researched, but it would temporarily unlock it so that we could get to the nodes past it. All the nodes that are being researched are actually researched at the same time, so if we had basic rocketry and all the other ones, they would all start progressing. This is going to take 10 days, which is quite a while, so why don't we try upgrading that? We now have 16 points, one of them is available. Every time you purchase a tech node, you will gain one upgrade, in addition to the ones that you can buy separately. Let's increase this, which will in fact decrease our tech time down to 5 days. Since we're using 6 hour days, this is 5 days. In the settings, you can change settings for the specific game, enabling or disabling the entire mod for that save, additionally disabling build times which allows you to still use simulations 
but not worry about build times. You can have tech nodes unlock instantly. You can simulate around any body, including ones you haven't encountered. You can change the recovery modifier. The default is 75%. This is for KCT's funds recovery. If you're using debris fund or stage recovery, you can ignore this. You can change simulations to not cost any funds, but you still must be able to pay for the vessel. That is a thing I need to work around in stock KSP. And you can enable or disable launchpad reconditioning. There are also several global settings, time settings, which alter how long things take, including reconditioning, and you can change the defaults for new saves. So if for some reason you never want tech nodes to cost time to unlock, you can have this enabled to unlock them instantly by default in any new games. That pretty much covers all the basic aspects of KCT. Uh, this has been a very quick rundown, so if you need a little bit more additional information about how all this works, try looking at the other video that should be posted on the original post on the forum page or try reading the Getting Started Guide, which is included with every version of Kerbal Construction Time. I want to thank you all for watching. Hopefully this has been useful for you. I will see you all next time.